Hello, I'm Jim Morningstar, Director of the School of Integrative Psychology and facilitator of the Integrative Life Community Building course. The focus of our eighth and final class is graduation as an Integrative Life Community Builder. In today's class, we will review what we have learned month by month, assess where we are now in our community building journey, and set goals for how we intend to grow our internal and external communities beyond this class. Class four, leading a prosperous inner and outer existence. How to manifest prosperity on all levels of your life by practicing the principles of abundance in earning, spending, saving, and investing your life energies to the degree that you build a community of prosperity around you and learn to teach and share it with your world. What is prosperity? The purpose of this workshop was learning how to manifest prosperity on all levels of our life. Prosperity is the ability to operate with a sense of support, effortlessness, and abundance in the physical universe. Prosperity consciousness is what we're looking to increase, and then to demonstrate and to practice the means of manifesting that inner sense of prosperity outwardly in our life. We challenge some of our major limiting thoughts and cultural programs around prosperity. We dealt with your thoughts about money. We looked at how money works and your personal relationship to it. This involved studying the four laws of wealth. The first law of wealth is the law of earning, connecting pleasure with money. Take handout four and complete section one. How connecting pleasure with earning money is now leading to more prosperity in my life is. The second law of wealth is the spending law. The spending law states that exchanging money, buying and selling is the secret of wealth. Successful negotiation is when both people win. Take handout four and complete section two. How being conscious of how I spend my resources is increasing my satisfaction of life is. The third of the laws of wealth is the savings law. The savings law states that if you can save money, you always have more than enough. Your ability to save money demonstrates that you always have more than enough. Take handout four and complete section three. A way I am now setting aside resources, money, time, energy, to increase my feelings of living in abundance is. Now list something, no matter how small your mind may judge it to be. This will be a stepping stone for more ways as you acknowledge you can do it. The fourth of the laws of wealth is the investing law. That is, make money work for you by increasing the capacity for others to earn and spend. Investing works not only with money, but with all your resources that you share with others. For example, time, attention, acknowledgement, love. Take handout four and complete section four. An investment I have made in myself or others that is paying off for me is. Stop the video now and complete handout four, then come back to the video. Class five. Allowing love to direct your relationships. We inherit patterns of relationship that are largely unconscious. Only by having the courage to identify them and reown the power they have co-opted can we change our level of interpersonal fulfillment. Creating conscious, loving relationships is work, but a labor of love that is both highly rewarding and infectious. Others will want what you're having, and it will pervade your personal and work life. We had several goals for this work. First of all, was knowing how to use our relationships on our spiritual path, to know why we created the relationships that we do, and why it is that we have the current relationships in our life right now, to learn how to better get what we want 
and help others get what they want in their relationships with us. We studied the original templates for relationship with our parents and how patterns with and between them continue in our life. We examined sexuality, jealousy, attraction, and completion in our relationships. I think the most important relationships, as it was distilled down to improve, is the relationship we have with ourself. All else follows from that. Take handout five, allowing love to direct your relationships, and complete section one, a way I have installed or reinforced a self-love practice into my life during this course is. Then complete section two, a relationship pattern that no longer serves me that I'm releasing during this course is. And then complete section three, a way I have attracted or reinforced rewarding, loving relationships into my life during this course is. Stop the video now, complete handout five, and come back to the video. Class six, multi-level awareness. We are multi-layered beings taught to be aware of only a small portion of our full self. Having a direct experience of other dimensions of yourself gives you the advantage of greater perspective in life challenges and a greater depth of wisdom in addressing them. We began this adventure by taking time to do developing detailed memory exercises to gain certitude in discriminating what is real and useful in your community building and how to inspire this sense in others. I believe that if I don't create time for myself to do some form of stepping outside of time every day, if I don't create the space to just experience my being, then I may feel like I've done a lot, but I missed the boat. I can chalk up a lot of tasks done, but I don't have a lot of value. In my life now, if I don't give myself that time every day, I notice it very dramatically. If there's one thing I would hope would come out of all the work together in this course, it's that you create those spaces for yourself every day. It could be meditation, reverie, journaling, contemplation, or walking in nature. This is a quality of depth rather than the amount of time. It does not have to take three hours. I may in 15 minutes be able to go to a depth that takes me then through the rest of my morning or rest of my afternoon in a whole different place of contact and experience. That's why what we are doing is absolutely training our minds. Take handout six, multi-level awareness, and complete section one. A way I create space each day to experience my being is. In this class, we did an exercise of multi-level awareness, which gave us the opportunity to experience ourselves in different times and forms while learning lessons that would be useful in our present time and form. Take handout six, multi-level awareness, and complete section two, a value I take from experiencing myself in other times and forms is. Stop the video now and complete handout six, then come back to the video. Class seven, completion. Living with a sense of wholeness, knowing that there is never-ending growth in the future and full satisfaction in the present. Releasing remnants of trauma from birth, parental disapproval, education, other lifetimes, or unconscious death urges is all part of leaving this course with the experience of and confidence in your completion. We looked at the five biggies, the major excuses we humans have for feeling incomplete in our lives. The first of these five biggies is called birth trauma. I prefer to call it birth drama. It's the experience of fear we had in our initial individuation from source and the subsequent story we created about ourselves and our relationships to the outside community. Take handout seven, completion, and complete section one. 
how I believe I am birthing myself into a greater sense of personal and community value in this course is. The second of the five biggies is called the parental disapproval syndrome. This is the tendency to carry on and judge ourselves the way we were judged as a child. Then, to pass these judgments or variations of them onto our children and others. Take handout seven and complete section two, a way I've increased my approving of myself and others during this course is. The third of the five biggies is called specific negatives. Specific negatives are other negative or limiting thoughts that we have picked up about ourselves and our world in the course of our life, coming from teachers, extended family, neighbors, friends, social media, wherever it is we've gotten and absorbed negative messages about ourselves and our life. These messages, when reinforced enough, become major negative beliefs called personal laws influencing our life on the subconscious feeling level. Take handout seven, completion, and complete section three, an affirmation I have about my present state of completion is. The fourth of the five biggies is called the unconscious death urge. This refers to the deep underlying desire of all humans to return to a state of bliss and harmony that they sense they experienced before birth, or perhaps even before conception, into this or any other lifetime. It's a natural desire to release all struggle and conflict. The misperception, however, that accompanies this feeling is the thought that this state can only be achieved through one's physical death. Take handout seven completion and complete section four, a way I have increased my life urges in this course is. Multi-level life experience is the fifth of the five biggies. Many people carry attachments to experiences in other lifetimes, quotes, as impediments to fulfillment in this lifetime. These show up as habits or attitudes that seem to have no explanation or historical antecedents in their current life or ancestral history. Take handout seven, completion, and complete section five, an experience of myself outside of current time and space that has given me value in my life during this course is. Stop the video now and complete handout seven, then come back to the video. Next Steps in Community Building I have been so inspired in this course by the quality and depth of personal and professional work that I have witnessed that I am taking my next step in community building, which I have been incubating for at least a decade, and that is to institute an organized network of spiritual communities starting in North America, based on the three cornerstones of community building. One, common intention, to inspire and develop community leaders who mutually support one another to create sustainable long-term spiritual communities in their respective cities, a community of community builders. Two, common practices, to have each community building apprentice teach the curriculum of the Creative Life series over the first six months of the next year as a foundational framework for spiritual empowerment and growth in their cities, using breathwork practices and their own leadership healing skills to sustain themselves and their community members. Three, common experience. To participate in a group, advanced practicum, and apprenticeship for the purpose of mentoring and shared experiences as community builders in our world, supporting one another's success on all levels and inspiring future leaders in their own communities. The advanced practicum will be for all who want to support, learn, and grow from this effort. The apprenticeship will be for those who are willing to learn and teach the Creative Life series 
in their cities and be supported by me and the Apprenticeship Network. Those interested in registering or finding out more details should contact me. Holding you in my heart, as fellow travelers on the road home, I send and receive blessings for our circle and all sentient beings. Blessings in light and love.